Leaving the service of thanksgiving for the NHS at St Paul's, something the Prime Minister's in too much of a hurry to bury Covid restrictions he brought in. This evening, back in Downing Street, he announced a new chapter in the Covid saga. We will remove all legal limits on the numbers meeting indoors and outdoors. We will allow all businesses to reopen, including nightclubs. We will lift the limit on named visitors to care homes and on numbers of people attending concerts, theatre and sports events. We will end the one metre plus rule on social distancing and the legal obligation to wear a face covering, although guidance will suggest where you might choose to do so, especially when cases are rising and where you come into contact with people you don't normally meet in enclosed spaces, such as obviously crowded public transport. So the government won't require you to wear a mask on transport, like trams in Manchester, but some would like that in the rules still, not just in guidance, and for other public spaces too. Well, I'd be reluctant to go shopping or get on the bus if they, if they scrap the masks. So I will keep um, wearing the mask, you know, because I don't think we'll ever get rid of it. Someone will be wearing a mask and someone won't be wearing a mask. It'll probably cause a few arguments. Having kind of raised this issue in the last couple of uh, days, I just have the sense that there is a kind of silent majority out there who feels uncomfortable about this step at this point in time. A little too far, a little too quickly. The Prime Minister said people should make their own decisions on when to wear masks based on common sense. Clearly there's a, a big difference between uh, travelling on a crowded tube train and sitting uh, late at night in a... Uh, a, you know, a virtually empty uh, carriage uh, on, 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 on uh, the main railway lines. In the Commons, one Tory opponent of Covid rules couldn't restrain himself as the Health Secretary announced the lifting of restrictions. We will revoke all social distancing guidance, including the two-metre rule. Hallelujah! Except <laughs> for in some specific settings. Labour said today's announcement was all about Boris Johnson recklessly trying to appease his noisy Tory lockdown sceptics. We need a proper plan and to throw off all protections at the same time when the infection rate is still going up is reckless. We need a balanced approach. We need to keep key protections in place, including masks, including ventilation, and crucially, something we've been asking for throughout the pandemic, proper payments to those that need to self-isolate. The Prime Minister wants an end to scenes like this forever, but when pressed on whether the lifting of restrictions would be permanent, he and his top advisers sounded a cautious note. If you know, heaven you know, forbid uh, some really awful new uh, bug should appear, then clearly uh, we will have to take whatever steps uh, we need to do to protect the public. This winter the NHS is likely to have both Covid and some resurgence of other respiratory viruses that were suppressed by the degree of lockdown last time round. So I think we should be realistic that this coming winter may be very difficult uh, for the NHS and I don't think that's a particularly controversial statement. The government guidance to work from home will go and the hospitality sector will be fully reopened. Though some in that sector worry pockets of local government could hinder their return to normal. And local authorities need to avoid imposing their own judgments on businesses and to, to, to back off in, in introducing more stringent regulations and replacing guidance with a regulatory approach in their local areas. The most draconian peacetime rules in modern history, which at their peak emptied our streets, are being removed in England. With Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland still to make their decisions on the scope and timing of their next phase. Boris Johnson would have loved to say his lifting of restrictions was irreversible, but the threat of variants that develop during mass infection meant he just couldn't do it. It's interesting talking to trade groups uh, today, people who run transport networks. You get a sense talking to them that Boris Johnson has kind of washed his hands of a lot of these restrictions and passed the responsibility on to them. Thanks a bunch uh, was the general sense you got talking to some of them. They now have to uh, draw up some rules of 
access to a shop, access to a train or a tram or whatever it might be, and somehow work out rules that don't alienate uh, some of their customers, don't alienate some of their uh, workforce. And they feel quite challenged by the fact that things are, have, have moved to this sort of grey area of guidance rather than uh, uh, harder restrictions or a complete lifting of guidance and uh, restrictions. And, and part of the reason uh, why they uh, should be worried is because this is, uh, as was made clear in that press conference, by no means a problem that has gone away. Boris Johnson said uh, at one moment, uh, there will be deaths. And what he was hinting at there was that, as we know, government uh, has been looking at what are the uh, potential death tolls with the lifting of restrictions. And part of that is uh, this phenomenon of looking at what is acceptable in a death toll to public opinion. Now, we don't know what the numbers are that the government is looking at. It's probably quite a, a broad fan chart. But again and again, uh, the, the Prime Minister and the scientific advisers were asked, you know, what, what, is, what are you calculating is the acceptable death that the public will uh, rate that the public will put up with on COVID with the lifting of restrictions? And they muttered things about modelling without being very specific. There's long been a suspicion that they think in terms of winter flu, they think 10 to 20,000, maybe a little bit more is an acceptable death toll, but we don't know. And when you listen to them, you get the sense that that figure could spike horribly if the wrong variant came along. We've got more announcements coming this week, one tomorrow on those bubbles in schools that uh, mean that so many kids go home if there is a COVID uh, outbreak. And it looks as though in that announcement, we're going to be told that whole system ends July the 19th. There's a, an announcement on quarantine arrangements for people who've been double jabbed, uh, isolation, how that might change. Uh, amber uh, travel restrictions, something on that as well. But there was one particular interesting document that came out today from the government, and that was its review of certification. With a lot of talk, not so many uh, weeks ago, about how the government might go down the route of COVID passports. You've been jabbed, you can do this, you can do that. The government has rejected that. But when you look into the document, you see that they've rejected it for now. And they talk about the autumn and the winter again and how things might need to be revisited then. You've got a general sense today that this was not one confident spring into freedom, but a cautious one and the government very aware that things, some things could have to be reimposed in a few months' time. Gary Gibbon.